So bait, we bring fish in. And as we always say, it's simple. It starts with ground bait. And today I've got this heavy fish meal mix. This is a 50-50 green. And I've actually got it slightly dry at the moment, so I can still manipulate it if I want to. I'll dampen that off with the particles that I put in and the water that comes off them, which leads me on to them. Now, there's a lot of tubs here, but fundamentally, there's not a lot of baits here. I've got worms. I don't think you can ever go and bring fish in without them. Natural waters, especially this time of year, we think the fish have been spawning, and what happens after that is they're looking for food, they're looking for protein, and worms provides that but they don't always work, which is why at a venue like uh, Ferry Meadows, I always bring casters. Now, you'll have heard me say in the past that I don't actually use casters at some bream waters, but this is certainly one of them. Big shoals of bream, roam in the lake, and these are a fantastic holding bait. And what I mean by that is that when the fish actually arrive, you need to hold them, because there's not a lot of features here, and the fish are on the move. So you need a bait on the bottom that they can pick at, and once they get crunching on them, they'll absolutely love it. Another good holding bait is dead maggot. It's highly visible, also got lots of protein in it. So a little bit like casters, just a brilliant holding bait, but what that also does is makes a great hook bait. And so by introducing them into your uh, feed, that gets them tuned in to eating maggots and that can be a fantastic bait. So we've got worms, dead maggots, casters. Talking of hook baits, I think along with worms, any self-respecting bream angler would all, always try and get red worms. Red worms, don't ask me why, I don't know if it's the fact that they wriggle, I don't know if it's the fact that they're dark and they taste strong because of the, what they're growing. These are fresh from a, a local horse manure pile. They look fantastic, they wriggle and certainly can be a brilliant target bait when you're looking for an odd big bream. And then I always have a bit of corn, really important. It's a big bait, it's a sight bait, and sometimes when it's a bit tough, you can put a piece on the hair rig and you'll get bites off that. So, fundamentally, that's the bait. Let's go and put it into action. So I ran through the bait I'm gonna to use today, but here's how I'm actually gonna apply it. Now, as I've probably touched on, there are big roaming shoals of bream here. So, what you've got to try and do, if, you, if you're lucky, they'll be there when you, when you start, but they're not always in front of you. And as they're coming along and they're finding your swim that you're creating, you need to hold them. So for me, and it's, you know, uh, some people think that you've got to feel your way into a match. Personally, I'm looking to catch lots of big fish, therefore I need to hold them on a big patch. So I'm not going to be shy about bait. So what I tend to do is measure out an amount of bait at the start. So I've took around a third of a pint of those dead maggots. I'll get a good helping of corn because I want some big, uh, heavy bait that small fish can't sort of just pick up and that'll just sit on the bottom over the top of uh, everything that I'm feeding. Then I'll take a similar measure, that'll be probably half a pint of casters and introduce them at the start. So I've got dead maggots, I've got corn and I've got casters. And what I'll actually do is use that as neat particles and scrub that with my feeding feeder and nip it off with the ground bait that I've mixed so that I know that I've got in, in total there is nearly sort of a pint and a quarter of bait. And I'll put that in at the start because I want to make sure that when they rock up, I'm gonna hold them in the swim. I can then feed on top of that. I've not put tons of worms in. I mentioned worms earlier because I like to use that as a kind of ignition trigger bait. So when the fish are there, you can actually inject worms in sort of neat, more uh, potent quantities. And I think that becomes more effective as a bait. The rest of it is just creating a bed. And that is what we're gonna introduce at the start.